You're listening to the One Man Show Network. Welcome to the MMA Fight Picks Podcast with your host, Aaron Weinbaum. MMA Fight Picks Podcast. Sorry, I've been on a little bit of a hiatus. I, uh, one kid, I am, uh, got graduated and uh, getting her ready for college and the other my son I am uh, getting him I got him ready for his driver's license so a whole lot going on but you don't want to hear about that you want to hear about my expertish picks for UFC 226 uh, takes place you know uh, sorry International Fight Week T-Mobile Arena in Vegas baby this Saturday July 7th 2008 uh, first up I am going to go I know this is a <clears throat> this is an undercard fight but it interests me so I am going to pick it Uriah Hall versus Paulo Costo um, man I like Uriah Hall I actually got to see him fight in Pittsburgh I believe but he is really hot and cold hit and miss um his last win, he did win against Jaco, but lost three before that to Masasi, Derek Brunson, and Robert Whitaker. So, this is tough. Then you got Costo, which really hasn't faced such stiff competition. Um, his last one was over a, an undersized Johnny Hendricks, uh, and then two other UFC fights. Bang Boos and then uh, Gareth McClellan, who I've never heard of. So, gun to my head, I gotta say Uriah Hall comes back. He had a bad uh, weight cut the fight before. I think he's got something to prove. I think he comes in and uh, he gets her done. Next up, you got Michael Chiesa, Anthony Pettis, which should be a 155 pound match, but there's a problem. Uh, Chiesa didn't make weight. He had a tough weight cut, I guess. Uh, from what I understand, he says this is his last fight attempting to make the lightweight limit. So he's going to opt to fight from 155 pounds. So I guess 170 pounds unless they create a 165-pound division some somewhere in there. Uh, I don't see it happening anytime soon. But, you know, you got Kiesa. I don't think he has fought since, yeah, he has not fought since a controversial loss against Kevin Lee, where I think he would have tapped out anyway. But people are calling it a late tap out. Man. And then before that, though, he was in kind of a little bit of a three fight tear. Um, Darius, Jim Miller, Mitch Clark, all tough guys. And then you got Anthony Pettis, who at one time was thought to be the most unstoppable force in the lightweight division. But, you know, he last lost to Dustin Poirier, uh, a weird rib injury. But, I mean, honestly, he's not fought since November 2017. But then he has a win against Jim Miller, a loss against Max Holloway, and that was a bad weight cut down to uh, 145. Uh, and then he won against Charles Oliveira, but here's the problem. Last time he fought before that at lightweight, he lost three in a row to Edson Barbosa, Eddie Alvarez, and Rafael Dos Anjos. Uh, I mean, they're all decision losses, but, you know, I just think it's one of those deals where he is kind of past his prime. Yes, I think is too big, too strong. You know, Pettis is... A good jujitsu practitioner is not as good in the grappling part of it. Kiesa is, and plus Kiesa beat Al Iaquinta, so that makes him the greatest of all time. So I'll, you know, depending on how the weight cut affected him, I got Kiesa beating Anthony Pettis. Next up in the heavyweight division, a very exciting, exciting fight: Francis Ngannou versus Derek Lewis. Ngannou now last fought. Uh, Stipe Miocic for the heavyweight title back in January and before that he is 
only lost one other time. So he's got some wins over some tough guys. Alistair Overeem, Andre Oslowski, uh Anthony Hamilton. So on Curse Blades, by the way, and, you know, he's he is a tough one too. He he is said to be possibly the next contender at heavyweight for the title. Then you got Derek Lewis, one of the more entertaining guys. I, 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 I would hope he wins just to hear his post fight speech. Um, you can Google those, but he last uh, won his last fight against Marcin Tibera, lost to Mark Hunt via TKO punches. I think he had to poop in that fight, if I am not mistaken. But really, before that, he has one, two, three, four, five, six wins in a row, man. So he is for real. He looks about like the most unathletic person you'll ever see. But... Then you got Nagano, who hits like a truck. I I, I thought he knocked Alistair Overeem out of his body. Bah, man. This is this is the one I, I'm, I'm having a little bit of trouble with. Uh, but, gun to my head, I gotta say Nagano knocks him out somehow. Hunt knocked him out. He's a hard hitter. It's not like... Uh, yeah, it's not like he's this great wrestler that's gonna put Nagano on his back because he couldn't do it to Hunt. Hunt knocked him out round four, and uh, I don't I don't see how Derek Lewis doesn't, doesn't get knocked out again by Francis Ngannou. So, yeah, I'm going Derek Lewis in that one, and then the fight that was supposed to be I'm not going to pick it. Obviously, it's not going to happen. Holloway Ortega, damn for the featherweight championship of the world. I was really looking forward to that. Holloway had some issues. Don't know what they are. I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. He. Uh, couldn't make couldn't couldn't make it to the fight. He he had concussion like syndromes syndrome uh symptoms and uh yeah, tough, 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 tough for this kid. This is the second fight he's had to uh pull out of. So yeah, unfortunately. Uh this fight is off. If this fight were to happen, you know, I, I don't know that I could have still picked it, so uh, I hope it, I hope they run it back soon. I, I I hope they they fight. Now here we are. This one. I I love this fight. Steve Miocic versus Daniel DC Cormier. Cormier coming up from light heavyweight to try to claim two belts. So he would have. Um, he is already the light heavyweight championship. He's going to try to claim the heavyweight championship oh man let's look at this for a second you know Miocic is an athlete man he played baseball in college he wrestled oh, man um I'm telling you this guy has not lost since 2014 against Junior Dos Santos before that you know 2012 against Stefan Struve and you know when he was just up and coming but he has wins over a who's who of the heavyweight division uh, Roy Nelson, Gabriel Gonzaga, Mark Hunt, Andre Avlosky, Verdum, Overeem, and then he got it back against Junior Dos Santos, and then he beat Francis Ngannou in his last fight. Then you got DC. Listen, this guy doesn't lose to anyone unless they're named John Jones, and this was at light heavyweight. Before that, he is undefeated at heavyweight, but let's look at this for just a second here. His last heavyweight fight was Roy Nelson 2013. So it's hard to believe he has been fighting at light heavyweight since 2014. So he has wins over Roy Nelson, Frank Mir, Josh Burnett, Antonio Silva, but man, no one really in the modern era, era of uh, heavyweights like Stipe. Not saying that DC can't get it done. Uh, he actually weighed in heavier than Stipe, 245, 246 or something like that, and uh, Stipe was just a little bit lighter, so that's crazy how much weight this guy cuts to get to 205. So, I mean, wow, 30 pounds more in this fight, uh, no cutting. How can you argue with the man that has the most defenses in the heavyweight division in the history of the UFC? I mean, I don't think that it's out of the realm of possibility that Daniel Cormier can take this, but I got to go Steve Baby Ocic. And he follows me on Twitter, so got to gotta do it. That's it, man. 
So enjoy the fights. I know I will enjoy the fights. Thanks again for listening. And until next time. Shalom. Please remember to support the podcast by visiting the affiliate links on AaronSaysWhat.com. Are you looking for a permanent home for your podcast? Well, Spreaker can do it all. Spreaker will give you your own RSS feed that you can submit to other platforms, including iTunes. Spreaker's mobile app will let you record from your smartphone, or you can use their web-based console with everything you need to record. Their podcasting plans include being able to host multiple shows at no extra charge. Got a YouTube channel? Spreaker's got you covered. You can effortlessly upload your podcast audio to your channel. You can even move your current podcast to Spreaker without losing any of your iTunes subscribers. Try any plan. 30 days for free using promo code ASW.